you are at the 2022 State of Marketing and Sales AI Report webinar. Uh, I am Paul Reitzer, founder and CEO of Marketing AI Institute. Uh, I think many of you are probably familiar, but we're a, a media uh, event and education company that I started in 2016, I guess you could say. And I'm joined today by Aurelia Solomon. And why don't you tell us a little about yourself and your role with Drift, Aurelia? Yes. Um, well, thank you so much for having me, Paul. Uh, again, always love chatting with you. Um, my name, as, as Paul said, Aurelia, I lead the product marketing, customer marketing, product education teams here at Drift. So you can think about my team as creating and crafting our messaging and positioning. So creating the stories of um, how Drift solves problems for our customers. And that includes everything from you know, bringing new products to launches, uh, launching new products, excuse me, um, to, you know, mess, um, thinking about how do we drive adoption and best practices for our customers of those products and getting the best usage um, out of Drift. So we really are everywhere from if you're a marketer, middle and bottom of the funnel. So helping accelerate opportunities um, and then helping our demand gen teams um, create demand um, and pipeline with launches and content. And I think the cool perspective that everyone will get to hear from you is you're hearing from the customers and, you know, what their interests are in AI and what kind of questions they have. You're thinking about it from a product perspective and working closely with that team. So you kind of have a <clears throat> multiple perspectives related to the topic at hand, which is, which is great. And, um, We'll get into the report a little more, but this is the second year we're doing this with Drift. So Drift has been a phenomenal partner. They're actually one of the earliest partners um, for Marketing Institute when I launched the company that came in and has always been incredibly supportive and sort of shared the vision um, for bringing AI to the industry and helping educate people. So we appreciate you all as, uh, as partners as well. All right, let's get into this. So some of you may have seen, if you are a Marketing Institute subscriber, we launched a book this week. So two days ago, it's like, we just decided to do everything at once. Like all of our stuff is happening in the same four day period. Um, but the book came out on Tuesday. So uh, I, I started writing this with my co-author, Mike Caput, who's also our chief content officer at the Institute. We started last April writing this, um, finished the manuscript probably in the fall, did some rewrites and then recorded the audio version in the spring. So I have known this was a thing for a while, but it's now available to the world. And this is from the introduction to the book. And I think it's really relevant to set the stage for how we're going to talk about AI today. So it says we are in a rare position to create change, to reinvent what it means to be a marketer. You don't have to become a machine learning engineer or data scientist to take advantage of what AI enables. You simply have to understand what is possible with smarter technologies and apply them to your business and, and career. So whether you are a marketing intern, all the way up to the CMO, you need zero knowledge of machine learning models. You do not need to care or want to build pivot tables. Um, this, is, this is for the marketer that wants to understand this stuff so they can find technology that makes them better at their job, makes their teams more efficient. And that's how we position AI. And I know that's how Drift talks about it as well. So then at a high level, we are under the assumption, the working assumption that within the next three to five years, at least 80% of what marketers do will be intelligently automated to some degree, meaning there will be AI infused into the software you're using to do your job. It will make predictions for you. It will help personalize things for you. It may help you make decisions. It may improve your creative. It's going to do all these things. And in many cases, it'll be seamlessly happening in the background just like it is on Spotify and Netflix and Gmail and Google Maps and like uh, TikTok and all these things that you experience every day that are impossible without AI. That's what will happen in marketing, sales, service. But as Aurelia will tell us with Drift and the other vendors with the industry, like we're not there where it's just fully infused into every aspect. And so what you're trying to do is find the technologies that help you become what we call a next-gen marketer that help you drive personalization experiences that consumers expect. I share with Aurelia before we get on and I won't trash the brand or the other vendor, but I had a horrible experience with a fast food company and their app and their conversational agent. And it was not what I expected. So it, it, what we're trying to do is create that level of experience that people expect from brands, both B2B and B2C. 
creative possibilities. You know, if you think about what's happening with Dolly and GPT-3 and like these tech that are just emerging, that are changing what's possible from a creative perspective. And I think you have to care about AI and you have to stay in tune with this stuff to understand how to use it. And then the last piece is the, the true business result. How do we actually drive business performance with this stuff? And that's the key. And what we're trying to do at the Institute is make all this stuff approachable and actionable, give you the knowledge, the resources, connect you with the experts, the vendors that enable you to understand this stuff at a very basic level and actually apply it to your career. Did I miss anything, Aurelia? That sounds great. We're, you we're good so far. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. So the report, as I said, uh, came out Tuesday. It is available now. So we will send you it after this, a link to, to access it. But we're going to go through some of the key findings. We'll give you a little background on the report, kind of why we do it, and um, the, the people that take the survey and, and do the responses. We're going to go through six key findings and some example use cases. And then we'll talk a little bit about conversational AI and, and move into the Q&A. So the, the whole idea of this report when we launched it in 2021 with Drift as our partner was to gain insights into the awareness, understanding, and adoption of AI in marketing and sales. So we looked around, there was all these reports from Deloitte and PwC and Forrester and Gartner and McKinsey, and everyone was talking about at the, the macro business level, the adoption of AI and the impact it was going to have. But we were struggling to find where are we really at as a marketing industry, though? Do people even understand what this stuff is? Does it, when a vendor tells you they do AI or machine learning or NLP, does it, does it resonate with people? Are we even at the point where they, it makes sense to them? So that was the idea of the study. And so the second year, again, this is kind of a look at a high level. And again, you, you can drill into um, the audiences within the report itself. But <clears throat> we had about 750 responses. The way it works is we used our AI score for marketers tool. So this is a tool I built in 2018 that lets you rate use cases on how valuable they would be to help you intelligently automate a task. So one way to understand AI is to actually see very practical things that you do every day, like writing email subject lines or predicting ad performance or um, figuring out you know, ROI, things that it's like, okay, I do that. And you just know that AI helps you do it better, faster, cheaper. So that tool, AI score, has, uh, we added 14 questions up front and then the 50 use cases. <clears throat> and so people could go through and take the entire thing. They could just do the, the survey questions. Um, so it's like not everyone did all 50 use cases, but in the report, you'll see the data. I think at minimum, it's like 230 to 250 is the response level at some of them. But in some cases, there's, you know, upwards of six, 700 responses to the questions. So a really solid sample. It's heavy B2B, but it's actually when we ask B2B, B2C or both, um, B2B is 38%, B2C is 17%. When you combine B2B and both, it's 79%. So a lot of B2B, um, but also a fair amount of B2C. The areas of marketing, we say, what areas of marketing are you involved in? Advertising, communications, email, direct. Um, the six, top six stayed the same this year. So content marketing was number one, analytics, email marketing, social media marketing, communications, advertising. So those are the areas people tell us, and you can select multiple. Uh, employee size, it's skews towards the SMB market in terms of like the employee size. But there's also a sizable percentage that are 250 employees and above, 21%, and then 9% are 5,000 employees above. So again, a fair representation even from the enterprise level. And then the industries um, is unchanged also. Top five, professional services, other software, education, media. So pretty diverse in terms of the background there. And then the last one I'll touch on is the roles. Uh, C-suite makes up 32% of responses, 49% are director level and above. All right, so the six <clears throat> key findings, and these come from the executive summary of the report. So again, you can dig into these. Aurelia and I are just gonna kind of go through at a high level and talk about them and then field any questions you may have about the data. But the first is the marketers recognize the transformative impact AI will have on the marketing industry. They're, like there's no doubt about that. And really like what are some of the things you see in terms of what they're looking for within this area? Yeah, absolutely. As I say, you know, I can't, I can't agree more with, uh, with this number one findings. I think 
what we what we see in our customers and with ours is around you know enabling AI enabling efficiency the scalability and and personalization and we talk a lot about those are sort of like all buzzwords right but if you think right. about um, efficiency especially in today's you know macroeconomic climate whether you are in the you know company that has unfortunately done layoffs or you're just kind of staying as is you know you're just not adding so you have to like think about how do you how does each person do their job more efficiently with the resources that you you have and 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 also outside of that climate you know you and I, all of us have things we do that are more like manual that we wish we didn't have to do like there's parts of our job i'd be happy to to, to automate um so i could focus on other areas that are more impactful to the business and and much more interesting and so that's where i really see we see ai at drift but also across you know our customers and and non-customers that we talk with of, you know, starting to evaluate for that core use case. Um, and I think the the other big one is around, um, you know, and personalization. So how do you, yeah. how do you let, I know we're going to get into this in some of the, the later slides, but how do you let the buyers, what, which we know today, some of the stats, right? Like buyers do over 80% of their buying journey alone and online. So you and they'll switch after any bad, you know, they'll switch brands after a bad interaction. So the I stopped buying a that Chipotle. I can tell you. That. Oh, I just oh, sorry. I, oh, I wasn't going to say that. It, anyway. it came out. I won't buy a that Chipotle anymore. <laughs> My kids love Chipotle. Not that so. I had a similar experience with them, um, a plant um, company at home delivery plant. Now, like bad experience. I'm not buying from them anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, going to other ones. So it's not just like, okay, the, it's not the low bar of not delivering a bad experience. It's how do you, you leverage AI to to create a really personalized experience based on their exact intent, letting them navigate and sort of um, ask the questions they want to ask, move around your website or your content right in the right way. And then remembering that so that you continue to uh, move them, personalize the experience for them as they progress through their own um, journey. So I know we'll get into all of that, but um, love this yeah. finding. And so the question we asked that kind of informs this is how important is AI to the success of your marketing over the next 12 months? So more than half, 51% say AI is critically or very important. Now, interestingly, uh, this is almost no change from 2021. So in 2021, it was 52%. Yeah. yeah. Something I think is interesting with this too, that we'll, I know, again, we'll get into in a few slides is it's everyone, it, this data shows acknowledge as very important or somewhat to, to the majority think it's, it's quite important, uh, but there's still a big gap on, on the knowledge piece. And so I know that's what we're going to get into, but it shows what excites me about this is all the potential um, and the future of what it looks like of AI's role for marketers and sellers in, in the B2B space. When I use this finding from the 21 report, when we do our intro to AI for marketers class, um, what I'll always say is if you said somewhat not sure or not important at all, my job in that class is to move you into the very or critically important stage. Like if, if we do our job as an institute, then we are hopefully moving people to realize the significance of AI and the immediacy of the potential to create value with it. Because I do think, and again, we're going to look at more data points, but generally speaking, my perception is that the vast majority of marketers still perceive it to be abstract and unapproachable. It, it's not a technology I can use right now. It's the thing I see in movies or on shows. It's, it's not like a real thing. And so that's a lot of our focus in that approachable and actionable is like make it make sense and make you realize like you can go right now and find tools to help you do it. Uh, finding number two, marketers are highly focused on using AI in the near term in three key areas. And we have touched on some of these already, but the question here was what outcomes is your marketing team achieving with AI today? So for the people that are using it, you mentioned Aurelia, personalization is number one. That was the same as last year, revenue acceleration and getting more actionable insights from marketing data. And when we talk about use cases a little later on, we'll actually see this one reemerge. So did you have any thoughts on these three when you saw them? Yeah. Um, I mean, this is exactly very similar to what, you know, we see and I talk to our customers and, and prospective customers about on a, you know, a daily basis uh, and as well as our product team, as we think about, you know, continuing to invest and evolve our, our product, 
um, we we started and we'll get into this of bringing AI, you know, as part of Drift, focusing on marketing and how do you leverage AI for the marketing persona to help them create these personalized experiences at scale. Uh, number one, there accelerate revenue. That's what we're all doing, right? That's the point of how do you grow revenue without uh, adding more costs or or I'm doing it all more efficiently. Um, but I think the insights piece of three, number three here is um, also an area that we um, have invested in of surfacing up, having AI analyze all the conversations that Drift has. I and mean, we have over 3 billion conversations across our customer base that's been happening on Drift's platform. That Is that takes, annually or that's uh, just yeah. in total? Oh, total, that's total, yeah. A lot of data to learn from. A lot of data to learn from. <laughs> and that's from, you know, live chat conversations, AI chat conversations, you know, decision tree, but all of that's data, right? And so then surfacing to to the marketers, what are the topics that your buyers are t asking most often about? Um, and I know we'll get into it, but like topics being, you know, 10x more accurate than keywords, right? It's a clustering right. of understanding all the different ways the same sentiment might be asked. Um, and as a marketer, as a product marketer, that, you know, I get super excited about that because I can understand in their own words, what are they what are they interested in? What are they asking about? And, and that helps us. I know we're going to this later too about what content do I create using that data? So there's yeah. using the insights to personalize the experience, but it's also creating a better experience. So getting back to the customer support side, maybe we're seeing that a customer, you know, number, number of customers are coming to the website asking the same question and we don't have a knowledge base article on that topic. Well, great. Now we can create that knowledge base article and they can self-serve the answer there um, themselves instead of having to, you know, you know, ask constantly, or um, we understand, you know, a certain topic of our product or something that's really interesting to, to our buyers. And that helps us from a top of funnel perspective and campaigns and all that. So I know we'll get into it, but that's, yeah. I geek out, I think on um, number three, quite a bit. Well, and I think, you know, just for, again, perspective for people trying to understand AI, natural language processing is a, a term you'll hear. It's an application of AI you will hear about. Drift uses natural language processing. And so the idea there is if you have 3 billion data points or conversations in your archives, you can't possibly have a human go through and tag every single topic and look at all of them and say, okay, these 300 are actually asking the same general thing. They're just using different words. And so that's where the natural language processing can come into play. It can try and understand, quote unquote, the language and the, the intent of the question and say, okay, that actually fits under this grouping. And then it starts to lump the things together. And that's how the AI can start to learn that that person is actually asking this thing, which it knows the answers to because 299 other people asked it in a different way, but it's the same thing that they're trying to find. That that's what AI does. It just it simplifies, it streamlines, it puts some intelligence into this so humans aren't trying to sit there figuring all this stuff out on their own. Yep. And then we have this example of the conversation without limitations. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, you know, with conversation without limitations, really the, the the concept here is let your buyers voice their intent in their in their own words. I had a one of our customers said to me, um, it, I love it because it lets us um, lets our customers use their own lingo. And I love that. It's like, it is it's their own lingo. It's the way they speak. And um, it's going to move them through a journey um, that is relevant for them. And I know, you know, Paul will get into this a little bit too, but is based on you as a marketer still do have some control over how you want to, well, how, what that journey is like. And I'll, we'll talk more about how Drift has, has done, brought, you know, has done that in our product. But from a customer experience, they don't feel that it's like this, you know, that you've put some sort of guardrails a little bit in there, right? right. Because right. the AI is, is moving them along in the right way based on what they need and answering their questions along the way. So um, this obviously on the left is just showing a drift example of someone who wants to talk to sales and right away, great, let's not put them through any hoops, just book a meeting. <laughs> Let them right. say what they want and get them to the outcome. Um, really think about outcome-driven experiences. And it's that tricky balance. It's like, <clears throat> obviously, I mean, brands want you to talk to human agents when a human agent is needed. But if you can fulfill the need and get them answers immediately, you want to do that, but you don't want it to feel like you're just trying to automate the experience away. Like, you still want them to just feel like, okay, I got exactly what I needed. 
I wanted to cancel my order from fast food company yeah. and I couldn't do it or I could <laughs> like, yep. did you make it easy for me? Yep. I didn't need a human at that moment. I just needed to cancel the order. Yep. Um, yep. But then I had to get to a human to solve it. So it's like, you know, you're trying to have that back. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So this is, this is a big one. So the industry still faces significant lack of confidence in adopting and implementing AI. You hear this all the time. I assume you're, yeah. you're getting this from a customer perspective, a prospect perspective. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, a hundred percent. And so at, um, Drift, we had this idea, um, where, you know, we didn't want AI to be this black box. And that's kind of gets into this lack of confidence is like, what is AI? Like there's NLP, there's ML, ML, there's all this, you know, what is it? And like, how does it actually work? And, and most of the people you're selling to aren't necessarily technical buyers where you're going to go into the, right. you know, all the nitty gritty of truly, you know, what is a dialogue manager, all these features of AI. Um, and so we, we went on this journey to democratize AI. Um, and I know it's a buzzword, but the idea being how do we just make it accessible for every yeah. for everyone? And starting focus, as I said, on the market or persona, and I'll speak to what we're expanding to later this year, but um, how do we bring it into Drift to show our customers who are in Drift where AI is actually at play so they start to understand, okay, this is, it's not this like crazy thing in the background that I have no idea is I can, con there's aspects that I can control while creating this great experience. And, um, you know, so some of the, to, to explain for folks who aren't as familiar with Drift maybe online is, um, we build conversations, right? So based on Paul comes to the website, um, and we want to create an experience for Paul. Um, what, how do we, what's his journey, right? What outcome does he want to, why is he there? What is he trying to accomplish? And so leveraging AI to based on the outcomes of the visitor wants, guide them on that journey, letting them voice their intent um, in their own words and, and ask questions and have that free text dialogue um, and then use that to take the next best action for them, right? And be able to context switch as the conversation evolves the way a natural human to human conversation rather than like, one, you can't always have live humans, like live chat's great, but people, you and me, right? We work certain hours and, and that's that. Uh, versus, you know, buttons, which, you know, a decision tree is great value for certain use cases. Like you just want to, you know, do one action and that's that. But you and I, we've all been in a situation where it's like, no, none of these things is what I want. Like, you know, how do I click zero to get to the operator, <laughs> you know, like get to what you need. Um, and so I think bringing what we've been able to, our customers have been able to really understand a lot more. Okay, this is this is what it means to be using AI. And then obviously you see that the impact to efficiency, um, not only internal to your teams, but from a lead demand gen perspective um, and, and where we're going to continue to invest is on the sales side and helping leverage AI to um, reduce some of those more like manual um, aspects of a sales, you know, sales reps job so they can spend much more time focused on selling um, instead of, I think the 30% is the stat that sales rep actually spend selling and the rest is on uh, prep and under, you know, research and prospecting. How do we surface, you know, information for them about their key accounts so they can be relevant and also automate some of those more manual tasks that you just have to do. And I think this, uh, you know, I always, you know, I've talked about this. I had this conversation with lots of vendors. It's like, how do we make people understand the difference between AI and not AI? And I think this is a, a good talking point because like, if you're on this call and if you think that having a chat bot on your site and having it tied to a list of is a customer or is not a customer, if that is the extent of your personalization, you are, you are not doing what's possible. So with the AI, it can take all these other factors, all these other data points into consideration. Not only is it a customer, is it a happy customer? Was their last NPS score? Have they spoken with an agent in the last 30 days? Did something just go wrong on the site? And we already know that. And they don't need to tell us something went wrong. We knew it went wrong and we can pop up. Like th think about how much richer the experience can be if it's not a simple rules based, it is or is not a customer. And And let's be honest, like, a lot of marketers are probably still, if even at that stage, like a lot of you are probably still running a chat bot that doesn't know if it's a customer or not when they're coming to the site. 
And that's what we're talking about. It's like, how do we make it more intelligent? But the problem is, and this goes to this finding, that the industry as a whole isn't really that able to comprehend what AI is and what it's capable of doing. So when we asked this question, how would you classify your understanding of AI terminology and capabilities? Last year, it was um, 50% said they were beginner level. This year, it's 45. So it's it's okay. Like that's a you know five point increase. Like we're we're making some progress, but it's certainly nowhere near where we needed to be to be able to move the industry forward. And so this is, you know, back in November, I was like, okay, how do we accelerate this? Like people have to know this stuff better for people to find the smarter tech. And so we launched this intro to AI for marketers live class that I teach every two weeks or so on online. And we've had 4,500 people register for the first 12 sessions. And that to me is like, okay, we're starting to get somewhere. Like we're starting to move the needle, but there's 11 million marketers in the world. Like <laughs> me teaching a class every two weeks or us, you know, publishing a book that that's something, but we need more marketers who understand this stuff and who care. And then as a result, feel more confident in buying this technology. So then we asked, how would you rank your confidence evaluating AI powered technology? 71% rate it um, as medium, low or none. Now we can argue is, is medium good, like that might actually be, um, but this has not seen improvement since last year. This is basically the same slide as last year in essence. So I, I mean, what do you think oh, really is, is medium good? Like, are, is that, it's better yeah. than low. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's better than low. It's better than none. That's for sure. Um, you know, I'd love to see very high. Uh, but I think, you know, I think for it being relatively new to this space, I'm happy to see it at least at like decently high at the medium. And I think that, that, correlates to the data we we're looking at earlier right there's still a big lack of knowledge um and knowing that it's valuable but not feeling confident enough and understanding it well enough um or knowing how you know confident really in how to to bring it in so um i think i w would love it to be better um something that i think helps build confidence also is if you start to use as a marketer, you can use AI yourself. Like you're using a product that has AI and you under, it just makes it easier to understand. So with Drift, you can go to our website and have a conversation with our bot. Now we don't, it depends what you're looking for, right? If AI is gonna be engaging you or if you're gonna, um, how that flows, it really depends on each visitor. Um, but if it gets to a point where you have all these questions, AI, you can actually have the experience of, how AI is in our product without needing to get into all the technical feeds. You can just understand the experience, the outcome for the website visitor in that case of an AI chatbot. Now the insights piece is more for a marketer. So you need to get a demo of Drift and all that to see it. Um, but I do think any way that a marketer or seller can start to leverage and use products that have it and understand it in a much more like simple way, um, I think that helps build confidence. The other thing I'm interested to to see evolve is um, you you talked about at the beginning. This is mostly respondents are C-suite and director level and above, right? So we're basically talking generations of millennials and above. Uh, but now there's going to be a shift, right? After um, in the next ten years or so, where um, you know the Gen what is it Gen Y or Z, the digital natives that. Oh, who literally grew up with internet and cell phones and iPads when they're like six months old. I'm very curious to see this, these numbers and the a adoption of AI, um, how that's going to increase is my hypothesis because they're just so used to um, that technology. They're not scared of it. They understand it. They use it all. They've been using it almost their, their whole life. Um, so I don't know that's a, you know, that's future oriented, but I think there's a bit of potential. And I think the key here is if you're in these none to low, that's okay. Like, so are your peers. So at the end of the day, AI is smarter technology, which you need to do your job better, faster, smarter. Um, to find that technology, you need to first understand what AI is at a fundamental level, simple stuff, not machine learning models and NLP deeply, just like, what is it? And then from there, you can buy smarter technology. So finding four is most marketers lack the AI education training needed. So again, we asked which stage of AI transformation best describes your marketing team. The majority, vast majority are at the just trying to understand what it is and how I can use it in my team. 
Um, then we get into piloting where I've started to do some, some test projects at 36%, which is okay. That actually edged up two points from the previous year. And then scaling is it's infused into everything we're doing. I, I want to talk to the 15%. I mean, honestly, it's hard to find brands that are actually scaling it. So I'm, I'm encouraged that there are 15% in marketing. Um, but I don't see them very often. I don't, I don't know who those people are. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I, I also really, um, I don't know too, too many as well. I think, um, you know, one thing that my first boss said to me unrelated to AI was as a product marketer, you need to know enough to be dangerous. Um, and I sort of held on to that because I think that gets to the education piece and the, the former slide, right? If you just know enough, you feel confident. And I think we're going to see the understanding moving to piloting and piloting, you know, moving up to, to scaling um, a bit more. And I think the other piece that's really important for this is um, is people, is is content training, right? Understanding not just the technology, but how to best use it and optimize and leverage it. Um, so I know at Drift, like we have both on-demand content um, around all of our um, AI and all of our products, um, but specifically here talking about AI, how it works, and you can leverage that, you know, self-serve because we know people want that but also have uh, consultants who are experts in AI, designing AI conversations, right? Using AI to design conversations um, and putting together a strategy that makes the most sense for, for your business and helping our customers to that point of understanding there, but also, you know, get into that piloting and feeling confident with it. Um, it's not like AI by itself is just magic thing that just like does everything. You need to understand, you know, in order to pilot well and scale, you need to know enough to be dangerous on it. And I think that's where the the content on demand or or um, experts like yourself who who can help um, will will start to you know help expand these these numbers towards scaling. Yeah, and part of the challenge to getting there is we ask uh, which of the following do you consider barriers to adoption uh, of AI in your marketing? There's 17 choices. Um, for 39 people responded to this one. So lack of education and training was the most popular response. Again, it was at 70% last year. It's down to 63%. So that that's good. Maybe we made a little dent there. Lack of awareness was uh, number two last year also, um, but it did jump six points. And then lack of talent uh, stayed at 43%. Now, the one I always find interesting in this one is um, we ask fear and mistrust because I think there is this assumption that people are afraid of it. And two years in a row, the data hasn't supported that. It's 19% versus 16% for fear. And then mistrust is 18% this year and 15 last year. So it just, I, I don't, I, it's one of those where like the findings almost anomalous to me. Like, I, I don't know that I believe that one. I do think people fear it a little bit. I don't know about mistrust. I don't know if they know enough to mistrust it. So I, I get that one, but the fear one, I think people are probably more fearful of the unknown than they lead on in the responses. Yeah. Cause like, if you don't see it, it's like, again, it goes to that black box idea. Like, yeah, that, what is it? What is it doing? Like, it's still your business. You want to control, there's some aspect, right? We want to control the narrative. We want to control the experience. So you don't want it just like going rogue <laughs> to use a word, right? Like it, it's not going to, um, but that's sort of, I think the, some of the sentiment around it until you, you know, have the training about it. And this one kind of, again, just reinforced is this stayed basically the same as the previous year. So very few organizations are doing actual uh, training dedicated to AI, which means people don't really understand what it is. Uh, finding number five, ownership of AI adoption and integration is highly fragmented across departments and roles with competing priorities. This is actually a, a new section that we added this year, new question. Um, did this one surprise you? Honestly, it didn't because I think there's so much benefit and value AI can bring across all personas in the business world, um, you know, in obviously different ways. Um, but I think so I, that doesn't surprise me. I think as long as it's related to the website, though, if we're talking about AI, like from a drip perspective, that's all it's still going to be owned by marketer as like the core persona because that's the website. But um, I think uh it has so much impact, especially as you think about insights and the different, just because something happens on the website. I and mean, we, this is our, our 
how we talked about a drift, right? Like that's key data. Like you're getting right. first party intent data from your either existing customer or target customer. And that's not just for the marketing team to like hold and do like the sales team should know about that. And, and then if they become a customer, the CS team should know about their whole journey. And so um, I think there's a lot of uh, demand and interest across, across personas. Yeah. And so we, we tried to get to like who actually owns this. And so the question we asked, and again, this was new this year, so I don't have reference data from the previous year, who in your organization owns the adoption and integration of AI technology for marketing, choose all that apply. So my, I, I did this project a few months. I've never published this data, but I went and took the top 50 CMOs in the world from, I don't know, Forbes, I forget which the publication was. There was four that had, I searched their name, AI, ML, artificial intelligence, like anything related to it. Four out of the 50 had any public point of view on AI being quoted in an article, having written an article about it, having done a talk on it. Almost no one in the CMO realm was talking about AI. So that kind of led me to like, well, who, who is like, who in these organizations is actually driving this? And my theory was it's the chief digital officer. And I don't know that this disproves that. And, and the reason is there's 17,000 global chief digital officers. There's 140,000 global CMOs. So the CMO is far more likely only because there's just that many more of them. There's 10 times more of them. But I think in organizations where there is a chief digital officer, my theory, and again, it's just a theory at this point, I think that that's the person from a marketing perspective that owns it. But to your point, Aurelia, it's, it's going to be in coordination with the data scientist, the data officer, the, the CIO, the CTO, like they're going to need support from technical, but from a marketing perspective, I, I would like to see CMO be much higher. Like I, it, to me, it is in the next one to three years, that number should be in the 60 to 70%. And, and I think the CMOs just need to really take the realm. We actually just released an AI for CMOs uh, report with with Persado a couple of weeks ago, where we kind of dug into this concept that the CMO has this opportunity to step up in a, in a really big way and, and take more of a role here. But do you see like, what are buying committees like for Drift? I mean, who's in the room making decisions when they're buying your product? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have CMO, um, and so that, that's a clear one, CRO, um, and now we also have been seeing a lot of operations. So whether that's revenue ops or sales okay. ops or, or, or marketing ops, um, if you get into the enterprise, when we sell enterprise, um, those customers have procurement involved, right? Um, bigger, bigger deals. Um, and we've been, and CTO, because there, there's the tech consolidation, right? How does it integrate across the system? So that becomes a really important persona in those processes. And then we recently launched a conversational service. So all about, you know, continuing that great experience for a customer after they purchase um, throughout their lifetime. And so we're seeing, you know, a, um, you know, chief customer officer, but more so like a, a VP or SVP of, of customer support or success um, that they sort of lead the evaluation. Um, I think the, the chief digital officer is a, is a new, is an up and coming and new persona. We don't yeah. even run into them too, too much. I think at times we definitely have, um, but CMOs have been chartered more with, um, I'll use the buzzword, but like digital transformation. There are a lot of, they're actually folks, and this might be that like lead digital transformation. That's like their job, like head of digital transformation or, um, and that's, you know, I think that was obviously starting before COVID, but that gave it the big, the big boost. Um, so I would say a lot of similar folks on here. Um, yeah. yeah. And then that kind of leads us into the last finding. CMOs and other C-suite roles have made our a duty and opportunity to work together to deploy AI and achieve lasting competitive advantage. This is, you know, again, I said up front, we're under the working assumption 80% or more. Uh, this is what the survey says. Uh, you know, the question is, what percentage of marketing tasks does your team uh, your team performs are intelligent automated to some degree today? So you're using AI in some capacity. So 77% in the pink box, um, the the outline box, they uh, use, uh, say, a quarter or less of their marketing tasks are intelligent automated. But when we look forward to five years from now in the green box, um, seventy four percent say more than a quarter, and I think it's like forty some percent say uh, uh, at least half of their activities. So again, it's like we know it's coming, 
And then when we look at, is it going to affect jobs? So what, what effect do you believe it's going to have over the next decade? People are generally optimistic that it's going to create more jobs than it's going to eliminate. So 57% say it's going to create more, 22% say it's going to eliminate, 14% say they don't know. Um, so that's kind of like a synopsis of the key findings. And we're going to take a few minutes, go through some use cases, talk a couple of examples, and then we'll leave um, probably 10 to 12 minutes for questions. So if you've got questions, go ahead and get those ready. Um, at the use case, and again, you can really drill into this in the report. We do it within these categories, planning, production, personalization, promotion, performance. That's how AI score is set up. So it's almost category agnostic in terms of advertising, content marketing, analytics. Those are all kind of lumped into these larger categories. And here's just a quick look at the top 10. Um, and again, reminder, these are going to be subjective based on the people who took these. So what someone may rate as number one, you may rate as number 50. So a, a couple of notes on these, um, ROI actually moved into number one. It was number three last year. Maybe as you were saying earlier, the, due to the increased focus on costs and efficiency, um, insights into top performing content moved from four to two and recommended highly targeted content went from one um, to three, but it's still in the top three. Optimizing website content was actually a big mover from number 10 last year to number five here. And then the six to 10, a uh, couple of big movers, performance reports, again, maybe tying to the efficiency and the outcomes, went from 17 to nine uh, this year. Buyer personas was the biggest jump. So construct buyer personas based on needs, goals, and intent. That was number 21 last year. And it jumped into the top 10 uh, this year. I love to see that one, the buyer persona. <laughs> I think, talk to your first point of personalization. You said like, you're just doing customer or non-customer. It's like, there's so much more granularity to yeah. how we as as buyers of personas, each of us, right? How we were interested in our needs um, and using AI for that to create really personalized experiences. So I love that. Okay. Got a couple of examples here we'll run through and then we'll get into the Q and A. Yeah. Um, so I, I know I've spoken a little bit, um, but I'm going to go through two, our two customers of ours, Okta and, and Tenable. Um, and I just have a couple use cases. So one is around uh, targeted account experience, right? So if you know that um, right away, like we know that this person coming to the website um, is, um, this is on Okta's bot, so this is how they do it. They know it's a target account. And so they they're asking, you want to talk to sales? Because that's what that's what they want. Speaking of how do you want to guide the conversation, right? But what you can see is um, they can select from a couple options or they can type in what they actually want. Um, and so it, this whole idea is how do you leveraging AI to create a very specialized experience for your VIP accounts, your whale accounts, whatever you want to call them. They get a different experience than anybody else that comes to, to your website. Um, and then second is around high intent pages. So this is all about conversion, right? Like we know if your data shows us, if you're on a high intent page, uh, they're high intent pages for a reason, things like pricing, um, your homepage, um, you are uh, more likely, especially pricing, right? Interested in, and you're probably later on in your, in your uh, research phase, you're, you're ready to look at pricing. Um, probably a high intent buyer. Um, this is where not only can an AI powering a bot nurture that visitor more, right? Nurture that lead with the information they need, um, but again, create that personalized experience for them. So based on what they've maybe engaged with prior on the site, or maybe they've returned, this is their second time. Um, so engaging them in, in the right way. Um, so these are just some of the results that Okta has seen. Um, they saw Drift as the fastest channel of converting those um, marketing qualified leads to pipeline. So again, that's where the AI, right, qualifying and taking that that time instead of having a human necessarily like doing that top level qualification where they could focus more on leads that we already know are qualified. Um, higher conversion rate. And then I think the 3K around support conversations deflected. So I think this is really important for uh, two audiences. You have sales reps, sales teams, right? Who like, you don't want a customer getting routed to a salesperson because that's a terrible experience for your customer, primarily number one audience. And two, for your sales rep, that's a waste of time. As we talk about efficiency, they're not the, they're not the person they need to speak to, but they're often the easiest one to get on the phone, right? So um, that is a, a big power of, of AI right there. 
Um, and then uh, for Tenable, I wanted to share a couple. Um, so getting them to the information that they need uh, quickly, right? So again, they can um, choose some, you know, pre, I think you might, some folks might be asking like, why do you have like some of these buttons? Sometimes you just include a few like answers that might, you know, it's easy to click through, but you give them the option with the text box, text box, excuse me, to, to ask the question um, in, in specifically, maybe I'm not, they're not looking for any of these things and then can say, no, actually it's not what I'm looking for. Um, and then this is what I'm looking for. And tying to what Paul and I were, you know, we were chatting about earlier is that's first, that's intent. You're not assuming based on behavioral data or anything, you are literally going to recommend an action respond based on what they are literally telling you they're looking for and want. Um, and then um, we use this, so we have, uh, Tenable uses this to drive more folks to their community. So that's where they allow, right, um, community of, of conversations. Um, and so you can just see a uh, conversation happening um, here and saying, you know, this is what I want, but they're, you know, here's alternatives of like, you can chat with this folks or you can access, you know, content here. Um, so again, understanding, I think, again, just to like summarize it, like using AI to understand what does your specific buyer want and how do you uh, surface the right answers and content for them in that conversation so they can quickly get to the outcome that they came to your, in this case, chat uh, for. Um, and again, just some uh, results uh, with with Tenable, um, faster, 3X faster delivering um, SDR qualified leads, 30% um, improve in conversation quality, um, right? So nurturing and having those right ones. And then 20% conversion rate on AI leads. And this isn't like, I say this because this one's super important because it shows that having that personalization, having that free text conversation, it helps qualify and get and you as a business qualify and, and helps your buyers qualify you. Like if you're thinking that we just are the ones qualifying, they're doing absolutely the same thing, right? There's so many options. Um, so it helps them convert. Um, and the last one is around this operational overhead. So one thing to be clear is this doesn't mean you're like replacing a human, right? It's just, that's the amount of like dollar savings and time savings that now can be reallocated to more revenue generating or higher impact uh, business initiatives. This year we added a sales AI component to it. It's because last year, 40% of people who responded said they were involved in sales. And so while we're not saying these are sales people per se, it's a sales involved role. They've got sales enablement. Um, they're working alongside sales. And so we just tried to kind of take a look at the data. And what we generally found is these people are actually more confident in assessing AI tech and they are a little further along in their understanding. Um, so again, you can kind of drill in the report and go a little further. Um, and then we also in the report have a little bit on conversational AI, which obviously what it really has been talking to us a lot about. Um, are there any key points here you wanted to highlight, Aurelia? Um, yeah, I think that, um, you know, the car, the, I mean, this sort of covers a lot of it. You could just think about um, how do you, it's there to help your website visitors um, get to the outcome that they want. So whether it's assistant, you know, an email, chat, message, different ways um, of conversational AI. Um, and then on the back end, using AI to be analyzing all of those rich conversations um, to surface those insights that um, really help you then personalize even more, whether that's in a text, whether that's on a phone call, a Zoom call with your prospect, or optimizing the conversation through a chat on top, right? Um, so I think those are the two core pieces of, of conversational AI. My final thought is we have a ways to go on uh, getting AI adopted across marketers, but I am optimistic that the value is understood and training is almost the easiest barrier to resolve. So if we unlock that, we get people trained, they know there's value with that part. It, we're, the change management will, will happen. So I, I'm optimistic. Mine is there wasn't 
that much change from the previous year. So the data, the benchmarks we had, the data stayed relatively consistent. We saw some improvement in understanding of AI, which is encouraging. But I think my biggest takeaway is the opportunity for you is immense. There are not many of your peers, whether you are the intern, the manager, the director, VP, CMO, there are not many of your peers that understand this stuff or can activate it, can use it to drive digital transformation. And that can be you. Um, so that whole idea of that next gen marketer, you can be that regardless of where you are in your career. And we as an industry need it. Not only we need to build more intelligent marketing. We talk a lot about this idea of more human marketing. We need AI to be applied ethically. We need to use AI for good. So we need marketers to understand what it is because it can be used for bad. <laughs> there, are, there are bad actors who are going to apply AI in very negative ways um, for disinformation, misinformation, um, all these other applications, deep fakes. We, we need people to understand what we're dealing with here so that we can collectively try and do as much good as possible with AI. Um, so I'll leave you with one final note and then we'll go into the questions. Um, if you're ready to dive fully in, we have the Marketing AI Conference coming up August 3rd to the 5th in Cleveland. So there's still time to join us. There is a report 22 code here for $500 off. Um, early bird doesn't, is that tomorrow? It's July 1st tomorrow already. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's tomorrow. <laughs> So um, I, I would love to have you join us. Um, we are back in person for the first time since 2019. So with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen and let's get into some questions. So we have one here from Dan. Um, what solutions are there which can construct a buyer persona? So I'll first say, does Drift uh, technology get into buyer persona building at all? Because that's something that's part of the platform. Uh, not like creating the actual persona, but you could leverage, I would say, some of the data, right, to... Okay. Uh, to put into a buyer persona, but no, we don't okay. build personas. <clears throat> Where I've seen it, Dan, is um, I actually was talking with a company earlier, uh, metadata.io. There's They'll do persona building specific to advertising. Um, AI advertising is another one of our sponsors that I know has persona building built into their platform. So they you know do ad creative, ad management, but they also do persona building. Um, you can probably leverage some AI tools within the platforms themselves, like Google and, F and Facebook meta, whatever it is, um, to actually find audiences and personas. The thing I, I think about with personas today is AI enables micro personas, like to, to hundreds or thousands of people. Cause what you want AI to do is personalize experiences. And I think what we will find over time is this idea of having three to five personas that capture all of your potential buyers is a very antiquated way to think about marketing. And I, I think we're going to need to move into where AI is helping us really individualize experiences. Um, and I, I, I don't know of the platform that's doing that other than, uh, I would think that they're largely within the advertising realm. Maybe some of the content intelligence tools, uh, would be the other ones I would think about. Um, Got a question here. Uh, why is there such a gap between understanding and piloting AI? That's a, that's a good one. Um, do you have a take? I, I, I have thoughts on, I could talk for the next six minutes on this one, but like, do you have an initial reaction to that one? Um, I, but my two thoughts, and I have no idea this is not validated if it's correct, but from conversations is, um, one building the business case to the other stakeholders that have buying, you know, are part of it. So not just like you might understand it as a marketer and see the value, but building the business case for it, which somewhat ties to the second one of, of price. Um, now that it's varied across different types of technologies and vendors of where it's priced at, but that can be a barrier. And then if you're not articulating and building the right value, you know, case for it, then it seems like a gets that gets to the ROI one, which is why I think that's so high. That's my hypothesis. But what do you think? No, I think it's right. And I think it just goes to the other findings of there's just not enough education and training around it. So they just people are struggling to understand it. And I think in some ways, like I just come back to no matter what the data says, and this is just me, but I think it's just abstract. Like I, I really think it's a it's a almost a branding problem for AI that it is this like high tech sciencey kind of thing that the geeks do like the data scientists and the engineers and like it's not for me the marketer and i think that's the perception we need to change 
to get people to realize like you could go pilot three things tomorrow. This technology doesn't always require a massive amount of data. If your use case is using it to help create social posts or help you come up with ideas for email subject lines or turning your audio into a transcript with reasonable accuracy. Like if those are your use cases, there are dozens of tools to do those things and you don't need a bunch of your own data. So it's the whole idea of accessibility, approachability. I think that's what we're missing as an industry is a deep understanding that this isn't hard. Like it's just, once you have this baseline understanding and there's actually another question that kind of ties to this, it says, um, you say AI shows up on the website on my marketing, but at my company, it's not and decisions are made without it. How can I get involved in that? My voice? Oh, that's not the one I was looking for. Um, oh no, here's the one I was looking for. Is it easier to get buy-in from my leadership team? If I don't use words like artificial intelligence and focus more on results and outcomes. And that goes to what you were talking about earlier, like your CEO, even your CMO, or maybe you, like you, we always tell you like, you don't need AI. You need smarter technology that helps you do your job better. It just so happens that it's AI that does that. <laughs> So yeah. what you should be thinking about is personalization, revenue growth, reduction of costs, um, all the things you showed on your like ROI slides. That's what the C-suite cares about. They don't always care how you're going to do it, which yeah. is why people probably don't come to Drift saying, I need the AI in your tool. It's like, no, I need Drift to like improve my business and help me grow yeah. smarter. A hundred percent. I was going to say, just the answer to that question is, <laughs> no, don't say you need AI. Say, this is the impact. I have this initial, you know, here's how I'm going to impact the business. So I'm going to increase the revenue like this. I'm going to reduce cogs here. I'm going to, you know, generate, like get more qualified pipeline this way. I'm going to, you know, shorten sales cycles by X time, you know, improve rep efficiency. Like that is those ties to business. They don't care how, like if you drive those results, great. Like that's all that matters. Um, so that's absolutely how I'd pitch it. And that's how we talk about with drift, right? Like it's not, we're not a, you're coming to us because you want to grow revenue. You want to generate better quality pipeline, right? More efficiently or, and you, you know, you want to make your sales and CS and, and marketing team more efficient to do those things. And you want to create better customer experiences. Those are the outcomes. Um, and how do we facilitate that? AI is part of it. <clears throat> and I think as we approach the top of the hour, it's probably the best way to leave this is Buy a smarter technology that helps you achieve business goals. That is the end of the day. AI is just smarter tech. Um, so I, I one really thank you for being a part of this. Thank you to Drift for being our partner in this study. Um, last year, I think we had over 4,000 people downloaded the report. So, you know, again, it, doing it small part to move the industry forward is this report alone. Hopefully.